All right. Hey, everyone. My name is Nina Uguomo. I'm the founder of Student Dream, and welcome to Student Dream TV, bringing you the best money, investing, and startup tips so that you can secure the bag before and after graduation. Have you ever wondered how to actually make money with a startup? and how to hustle so hard that you get featured in places like Forbes, Echoing Green, and get a adjunct professor title under the age of 30? Well, if that's you, I have a special guest, Amina Yamusa, who's done just that, and she will just be breaking down how, to, how you can do it too. So if that's something you wanna do, keep listening. Hey everyone, we're back to Student Dream TV, you know, continuing our keynote series where we're teaching you how to secure the bag during and after this new normal. And I'm talking to some amazing business leaders, entrepreneurs, investors who have done it, are doing it, and want to teach you how to do it as well. And so today I'm here with Amina Yamusa, a friend, a colleague, man, just a, a, a co-hustler. Like we literally started at the same time. And I'm so excited to just talk to her, hear her story, and share her story with you guys. So thank you, Amina, for being here with us today. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited. Of course. I mean, literally, we've been talking all day since just COVID-19 broke out. Literally, we have our, our stand-ups because we're working and creating all these things. And so I know who you are. We've known each other since, what, 2013, 2014? About that time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so it was a good six, seven years. And um, man, it's just so amazing to see where, we, we, where you're at right now. And I mean, I, so I know your story. I say that all to say I know your story, but I'd love for you to just quickly introduce yourself to, to the Student Dream community, who you are, where you're from, and what you do. Yes. Um, so as you know, my name is Amina Yamusa. Um, I guess from my bio, my favorite job title, and I've had many, still have many, it's probably civic technologist. I really like Okay, that. okay. Yeah, yes. Um, and yeah, no, I think when it really comes down to what I care about, it is really helping um, black and brown youth really um, understand and leverage their, their brilliance. Hmm. Um, and I think that has been the kind of common thread throughout my career um, and everything that I've kind of done since I graduated from college. Um, at points, it's been focused more on the political engagement and voting rights aspect of that. Um, mm -hmm. and so more so fall into the, you know, helping black and brown youth really understand their um, career progression and how yeah. to break into a career that they love and to get paid well doing it. Come on. Yeah, I'd say that. Career that you love and getting paid well to do it. Yeah. And so, you know what? You, you, you talked about what you like to pull out of your bio, you know, mm -hmm. civic technologies. But I'm going to take a minute and just read your bio <laughs> because if, if you don't gas yourself up, no one else will. And Amina earned all of these accolades that I'm about to share with y'all. Listen to this real quick, guys. All right. So Amina is the CTO of Block Software, where she develops software and data tools that help workforce development programs track and increase job placement outcomes as they work to upskill 120 million job seekers for the future of work. Amina is a former data engineer at moveon.org, where she helped to implement data pipelines for outreach campaigns, reaching 15 million voters. Come on, 15 million, y'all. Amina has also worked with young adult job seekers across New York City's Young Adult Internship Program. As a former career instructor at SAMA School NYC, Amina's work is grounded in three years leading our block a social impact organization that aimed to narrow the black collegiate rate from 13% to the national event, an endeavor that served 2,000 students, 2,000 students, 2,000 students, and was recognized, because you better recognize, recognized by Echo in Green, Camelback Ventures, and Forbes 30 Under 30. So we are in good company, you guys. This is my, my sister, my friend, and uh, she is a boss lady. <laughs> so with, with all that being said, Amina, how did you do it? Like talk like just in a, in a few minutes, right? Share about your journey because it's so impressive, especially, you know, for me personally, and I'm sure for people watching, just the power of gathering. You hear about community events and how hard that is, but you yeah. did it. You know, and this was pre the yeah. software platform. You did this both yeah. offline. 
yeah. and online. So talk to me just about a little bit about your journey and how you got to our block, how you got to block software. Yes. Ooh, it was a journey. <laughs> um, so I think it really just started off with me really trying to solve a problem that I experienced for myself, mm. which was graduating from college. Um, and for the right after I graduated, I was unemployed, had no clue what, what I wanted to do moving on. And part of that was because I had decided um, my junior, senior year that I no longer wanted to go straight to law school. It just wasn't my passion. And as much mm -hmm. as that was, you know, the immigrant kids dream and pathway that was right like, for me, I just, where are your people <laughs> from? Ghana and Antigua. Hey, uh, the African and the West Indians. <laughs> oh, <laughs> doctor, lawyer. Levels of intensity. I love it. Yeah. Right. Um, so yeah. And no, where'd you go to school? We got to shout out the alma mater because uh -oh. you earned that. Princeton. Yeah. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Tag us. That was a journey. Um, <laughs> so yeah, no, I think it was, you know, going to Princeton, I had no understanding. I just kind of assumed, um, you know, like I always say, like I went in, my president was black, my first lady was too, and she had gone there. So like, it, it was just all going to work out, right? Yeah. Um, and didn't realize there was this hidden, hidden curriculum, right, of how to navigate your way into a career, let alone how to navigate your way into mm. wealth. Um, and I graduated and looked around me and looked at my friends and I'm like, man, we're all struggling, but all these white kids wow. are, are popping, you know? Um, so yeah, I decided to solve my own problem because I, I have a tendency to talk. I can talk quite a lot. Decided to that. solve my own problem. That is a fact. Go ahead. Okay. Let me start, you know, taking advantage of the fact that I had an older brother who was well connected. I had a lot of friends from high school, college was always kind of that near peer black person in BSU or mentor who would, you right. know, help me with a few opportunities I did land. So I was like, let me try to expand that out. So I threw our first conference which was called Breaking It Down. So it's funny when you're yes. in the intro, I'm like, wow, like really taking it back. Come on. I remember. Three companies now, um, two of which have failed. But um, Wait, you said, say that again? Yeah, technically I'm on my third company. Ah, but I feel like it's all an evolution. It is. Really. It's all, all aligned. Yeah. And Cause did you, did you incorporate them differently or is it still under the same incorporation? Oh, so, um, sole proprietorship for breaking it down. Okay. E Corp for our block and the corp in the process of reincorporating out of that for a block. Okay. Stuff. Cool. Uh, so yeah. Technically three different entities. Um, but you're right. So each company has solved the problem that killed the company before. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, and no, I think it really just came down to, um, yeah, trying to figure out, okay, not being attached to our solution of the problem, mm. um, but being really attached to, okay, like how do we actually um, solve this challenge of Black collegiate unemployment? Right. Um, hurt, help more people. And yeah, no, I think, you know, the second iteration of this, I should never have been a planning event. <laughs> Lord knows. <laughs> yo, but you did it, man. Like you, 2,000 people. I was, I went to these events. They were, yo, guys, these events were popping. So I don't know what she said. I tried, but, you know, I think I realized something I learned later in my journey, this idea of like, was it founder solution fit? Um, mm. so like, yeah, that the work that you do as starting your company, you shouldn't just build what is, Needed, don't get me wrong, that's important, but you should build what is needed and kind of what you have a competitive advantage doing. That's um, good. That was my mistake both times around, I guess the first time. <laughs> you know, first time, yeah. second, I didn't do that. I did, I was like, okay, here's the gap and here's the traditional way how it's solved. Let me just do this. Uh, identifying, okay, here's my unique skill set and here's how I can really contribute, which is what I do now. So That's dope because essentially you innovated. Yeah. Yeah. You know, no. desperation <laughs> when you have to pay other people um, and figure out how to survive. Um, Come on. Me. Yeah. Story yeah. of a, of a, of a, a black person in America's life. Yep. 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 But you did it. I love that. Um, and so, you know, you, you've had so many accolades along the way. Right. And, and I think that one of the things Chisa said in our first episode of student dream TV, Chisa is the founder of Pedal Software, started the company at 26, you know, is now working with clients such as the NFL, right? Boom. And it's a, it's a scholarship, you know, one-stop shop for finding scholarships and graduating college debt-free. It's an awesome tool. Uh, he mentioned that, you know, if, if you don't gas yourself up, no one else is going to do it. Yeah. And 
they really, I mean, him and, and Kayla have done a, such a great job over there just leveraging their skills in journalism to spread the word and promote themselves and just take captive and take hold of every opportunity available to them. And so, I mean, for, for you to get on Forbes 30 under 30, Echoing Green, right? Camelback Ventures, these are very, whether our listeners know it or not, these are very, very premier, notable, prestigious programs. I mean, how did you do that? Good question. Yeah. Uh, some of it was just it's not by accident, you know? Right. So I applied to Echo and Green multiple times. Okay. Um, I think some of it was I learned networking skills as I was building the first iteration of the company that made me realize um, kind of what I was teaching students, which is that, you know, how powerful your network is and how mm. much, you know, knowing the right people in different scenarios can really help you. Okay. Head. Um, so kind of abandoning. I don't want to say abandoning a belief in meritocracy is a little extreme, but <laughs> say um, what you want to say, girl, be yourself. Yeah, you know, <laughs> okay. um, That's like the one thing I always emphasize, like, Hey, but you got to yeah. bury the merito- meritocracy. Do that. I learned how to play the game a little better. I mm. think when it came to understanding it and my co-founder gets so mad at me because I'm extremely introverted. I do not like the accolades, but he'll kind yeah. of you know, be like, okay, this is helping move the mission forward. This is helping us mobilize resources. Like we at least have to do it. You don't have to yeah. ever do it again, but you at least have to right. um, enter the network. Um, so that's really how I've uh, approached it. But yeah, you'd be surprised. So for example, um, Camelback Ventures, one of my friends in Camelback, Will, was the person who referred me to Echo and Green. Echo and Green referred us to Forbes 30 under 30. Forbes mm. 30 under 30. My co-founder recently got on their Times Youth list or Young Leader list, right? Word? Riley? Uh, yeah. Got referred. I didn't even know they had that <laughs> Time it's Youth a, list. I don't know if it's a lit. Actually, let me not. That's it's great. A type of event leadership thing. And he's like, do you want me to recommend or let, I'm going to loop you into this? I'm like, no, you got it. Right? <laughs> but um, So you'd be surprised how, um, yeah, again, there's like this hidden curriculum, this hidden pathway. Mm. A lot of like, networks. Um, hidden curriculum hidden yeah. pathway that's such a great insight and yeah you know? I think realizing kind of going to spaces I'm like wow everyone knows each other right like mm. everyone it's the same way like civic tech um everyone's done NLC everyone's done um Coro right like there's uh, all these different worlds. and explain what those things are with NLC yeah. so they're I'm not um, familiar. okay so they're um huge like political fellowships that if you want to mm. become a young leader in civic government, if you want to run an agency, if you like want to do anything um, at the city's local state level, um, they're considered to be pipelines into those types of careers. Okay. Um, so yeah, I think, and you kind of realize the further you get in your career, if you're in civic tech, like you realize, oh man, everyone has gone through these three programs. Um, they all know each other. They're all friends when you want, you know, to support each other, right? Like even I don't want to say deal making, right? But like even advocacy policy making is impactful. Yeah. You know these people from 10 years ago, you know? So anyway, just realizing that's more important than what I thought was important in school, which, which was just grades, right? Or just Whew. performance. Um, and I would say that's been the biggest, um, that's had the biggest impact on my ability to, to generate wealth, I guess you could say. For yeah. What you all focus in on. Yeah, man. So it's literally been at every level, network at at for getting the job, network for getting the fellowship, network for being able to launch a successful company, network, network, network. Yep. So when it comes to me, when it comes to wealth generation, I almost have like two buckets. Yeah. Um, like the long-term wealth, which is more of like, or wealth building, which is more of the slow play for me, which is really like, how do we get long-term scalable revenue for block, right? Um, and then I have kind of the short-term strategy which is more of like how do i get fast recurring income to say throw out loans or like everything yeah. I do, kind of like break my brain off into that so i also have a, a million and one side hustles like career coach for two different organizations all right and so man that's uh, there's a lot in there you know this, you got the side hustles and and i know what that's like i, I remember it wasn't until you know maybe two years ago or actually wow time flies three years ago you know, and this was 2017. So this is probably, uh, we started Student Dream in 2013. So this is four years into launching Student Dream, where it finally, finally clicked for me, like, yo, 
this hustle stuff is not sexy. You know, people make hustle seem so sexy. Like I was living paycheck to paycheck. I was mismanaging my money. You know, I wasn't, I had money coming in, but I wasn't saving. I wasn't even realizing that I have to pay back debt, you know, even though I had very little college debt, um, but I still had some, I didn't realize that I had to pay it off. And, you know, I went to this finance class and it just clicked. You know, like, yo, there's more, there's more than to money than just spending it. And I was just sick and tired of just the hustle. I, and I'm like, yo, I'm trying to help people build wealth. Like I need to really focus in on building my own wealth. And so yeah. I love how you mentioned, there's just that time where you're like, yo, I'm not going to be in financial ruin again. And for everybody listening, like, you know how it feels. You've been there. I'm sure you've been there. So the question of the day is, will you make a decision to not go back to that place? You know, will you make a commitment to be like, yo, I'm not about to be in financial ruin again because there is so much that is in your power, whether it's learning a new skill, whether it's finding side hustles, coming up with a business idea. So I really want to know a little bit more about how you were able to just find that product market fit, specifically with, with breaking it down, because even though it, there may not have been so much revenue coming in, you were able to gather 2000, you know, black collegians and that in itself, that, that proves something. I mean, you look at Twitter, right? They may not be super making super amounts of money, but they're gathering folks and an audience. That's a huge platform to be able to draw advertising dollars and yeah. sponsorship dollars, which you did do with breaking it down. So talk to me about just your marketing strategy and how you were able to successfully gather all of the black collegians and then all of the speakers and, and the venues, right? Yeah. These threefold to be able to build that because that's huge. Yeah. And I think my biggest advantage is that I, one, knew the person that I was working to serve. And I feel like that's been the, again, the other common thread through every company mm. built. Um, and then I think the other advantage I had was that, I don't know, I've never been wary of going to where people are people know like i would pull up on campuses <laughs> and i like i would show up at market friday at spellman and i would have a suitcase full of sweatshirts block through decks and nice. have a sign up form and be like i need y'all y'all get a um first 20 people get a crew neck if you go through this sign up floor that's actually how we tested out our first digital product that became one of the core plugins for block software right mm -hmm. um so I've just, to me, and it's sad because you can't really do that in COVID-19 era, right? But before, it's like- There are probably some hacks. We, we should come yeah. up with some hacks. I think it's yeah, it's different. Movies, right? Yeah. Not, it's um, not physical, face-to-face. -face. Yeah, I was just really humble. Like, it, I would be the person, like, I would get up. It would be my job. All right, even, like, with Twitter audience building, people don't understand, like, back in the day before Instagram, like, banned a lot of bots, it really is almost a number. I could reliably get a 1,000 followers every month like and that's mm -hmm. if I was being lazy right and it really just comes down to a piece of content that resonates with your community and following people and then the people who don't follow you back you unfollow and like literally <laughs> a formula for it right I love it and it's funny I would try to hire people to do it but they would not like just the there was no kind of validation like it's very I guess mentally taxing mm -hmm. at some point to like follow people and not get followed back and like there was just a lot of resistance I could not no matter how much I pay people, get them to just wow. follow people, right? Hmm. And so, like, I, I just never, um, kind of like that cognitive load of kind of doing things that are super tedious or that are not immediately rewarding, I guess. I've just always been good at um, seeing the long game. And yeah. you know, like, I don't need short-term gratification on a task if I know that the outcome, right, is going to happen. So, I don't know. I think those were some of the things that I did. That's what's up, man, the hustle. And yeah. so, wow. So what is something, you know, when you think about, like, tell us something about, I mean, right, you know how people like, tell me something about myself that I don't know, right? I graduated <laughs> from Howard. Shout out to all the bison listening. Yeah, You know, we got yeah. Princeton BSU represented here. I'm sure we got folks from Megar Evers listening, folks from, you know, uh, Lower Manhattan Community College, Bronx Community College, John Jay, Spellman, Chicago State, all across the country, right? All across the world, we have folks listening. Tell us something about the Black Collegian that we don't know. Something about the, yeah, something that you found to be really insightful just from all of this work you've done. 
in the last seven years? Yeah, no, I think um, the one thing that became obvious to me once I got farther removed um, is just how well positioned we are to be leaders, right? Mm. I think there's a certain level of resilience, a certain um, emphasis that we put on communication, on culture that really benefits you in the workplace so long as you don't get kind of sucked into the fear of, you know, imposter syndrome, essentially, right? Mm, yeah. Um, so it's funny. Um, yeah, I, I don't experience imposter syndrome anymore, you know? Uh, yeah, you know, I always tell people, like, when I walk into a room and it's all white men, it's like, I know why I'm here, Jake, right? Like, why are you? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, you, they have to prove Jake, me, Spencer. Uh, like, not reverse, right? Um, because I just know I, I am black i am by pan i am um i've struggled with chronic illness for most of my mm. life right i have like all the <laughs> yeah the intersectionalities right and it's just there's no way i haven't had to work harder than a cisgender white straight rich man you know right. um so i think it's just recognizing that all of those things that um do present very real challenges especially when it comes to wealth generation right ultimately though they do position you to be a stronger leader mm. um, so i think that's the thing that is again not a surprise and i feel like we all should know it but yeah but i mean nope. it's it's i think one of the biggest things i think is just taking that time to pause yeah. you know pun intended we're in this pause right you know taking that time we're both in the, the I'm in Brooklyn, you're in New Jersey, greater yeah. New York City area, taking this time to pause. And I think for many people, this has been a time to just reflect and think about, yeah, what do I want to do? What do I don't want to do? And so I think a lot of us know it, but don't take that time to pause and, and reflect and process and figure out, okay, what's my path forward? You know, where do I really want to go? Who really am I? What decisions do I really need to be making? What value do I really need to add? And can I add? So I think that is that is an issue in terms of like taking that time to pause and slow down. So, you know, you, kind of just shifting a little bit to your shift, right. From analog to digital, you know, you went from having these in-person programs to completely online software tech powered by artificial intelligence, machine uh, learning, yeah. let's go all the buzzwords, <laughs> right. What did that look like? Was that an easy shift for you to make as a, as a businesswoman? Um, and as a business? No, um, I think the only advantage I had is that I knew year one with our block that we were going to have to make the transition to really survive. Mm. So I just had, I think I had start on it, but even still, I wouldn't even say I fully made it. I would say maybe I'm just now finally making that transition mm. or completing that transition. And it was what, four years? How did you have, how did you have that foresight? Yeah, no, I think it was just understanding the numbers game, right? And ultimately, yeah. I could not think of a single national career development organization that reached, um, what was the number? Was it 2 million Black collegians, I think, at that point who were graduating from school? 4 million total, wow. right? So um, it was just the only thing that has reached this many people is a digital solution. Come on. Uh, I think it was just recognizing that really, really early on. Um, that again, like I just did not have a model of a in-person events, you know, maybe South by is the closest you get to that, like South by Southwest, but that's a fact. Yeah. And that's I, cool. I knew I was not a good enough event producer for, <laughs> for that. And so talk to me just about how, um, so you, you're going from 2 million to 4, 4 million, all this stuff is happening. You're going onto Forbes, Echoing Green, Camelback. How old were you when you started Block, Ooh. the first iteration? Three, twenty-two, twenty-three. 22, 23. Wow. Right after school. Man. I went to her blog during school about helping other black college students find um, well-paying opportunities in like the civic engagement space. So kind of like do good, but also I, I can't. Yeah. So this stuff was just like oozing out of you. Yeah. Since 2011. It's not, come on. Yo, I love that. And so for anybody watching, it's like, yo, what, what is already oozing out of you? You know, is it civic technology? Is it artificial intelligence? Is it music production? Right? Is it art? Like you want to focus in on that stuff that's just oozing out of you. It makes it so much easier. I mean, we both can attest to this, yo. 
So that's, man. And so like, like thinking about the future of work, cause you're like, I want to help these folks find good paying opportunities, right? Cause I think a lot of times when we, when we look at financial education content, at least for me, as I've done my research, a lot of it's focused on getting out of debt, yeah. which is important, but there's only so much you can do to decrease your expenses. At some point you have to make more, more money and you have to start putting your money to work in a way that it makes money for you. Here at Student Dream TV, we talk a lot about how to make passive income, how to invest, because how to invest in real estate, invest in the stock market, because all of these tools and you know how to start a company are ways that you can accelerate your income generation, both your active income when, you, when you're working for money or your passive income, which is when you're having money work for you. And when you look at the future of work, whether that's artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, digital currencies, they understand the future of work and where the world is going. Yeah. And so talk to me about the future of work, what you're seeing and what you're, you're a little concerned that our people are not seeing. Yes, I think it's just the widespread job displacement is really the top of my thing. Even and the funny thing is, um, I actually think it's at the higher end. It's in the white collar jobs. I think we're going to see it happen the most and people mm. are only expecting to see it well it's not most unexpectedly i should say um people are thinking oh i have people who are thinking oh i'm going to be a lawyer or doctor and that's going to be resilient right yeah um and it's food services that's going to get hit it's manufacturing that's going to get hit mm. not realizing the only thing that might not get hit are is the care industry right mm -hmm. uh, things that are just very hard to automate um and that even if you can automate it do you want a robot taking care of you right like those things won't like nah. you want a robot taking care of your kid no right um but just recognizing you know like i have friends or you know i know of startups working on digitizing lawyers you know what i mean yeah um and so will lawyers always exist i think so but you know at the scale i wish they exist will you know, will they have starting salaries at 180? No. Hmm. Um, so just recognizing that, I think that, yeah, recognizing like we're really taught, especially black immigrant kids, right? Like there are maybe three sustainable career paths and you go down these, you'll be great. Like you'll be fine. Um, but I think we're going to start seeing a lot more people graduating from law school unemployed. Um, and so like, what do we she said that? Yeah, no, it's going to happen. It, it already happens, right? It's just people don't talk about it. Um, mm. So, yeah, that's my, my biggest fear is that we'll think about yeah. it. Uh, we call our professions. Well, thank Thinking you so much. And, yeah, sorry. Yeah, thank you. No, no, thank you so much. Like in, in part two, we're going to talk about, you know, what is your career and financial advice for the graduating class of 2020? Yes. You know, we're going to talk about innovation. We're going to talk about just what, what grade you would give to the current state of black wealth and how to change it. <laughs> yes. So to be continued guys, we'll be back. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Sabina. So